Hi guys, Mr. David here. So there are a lot of really interesting jobs out in the world. Take mine, for example. I get to read silly books with silly voices, do arts and crafts, and teach fun activities to kids. I love my job, and I can't believe it took me so long to find it. But in finding this job, I had a lot of other jobs working in kitchens at fast food restaurants, selling newspapers, selling insurance, working customer service, and we're even working as an actor. Now along the way, I learned a lot, but I also met a lot of interesting people with interesting jobs. You know what? I want to share them with you. I want you to meet my friends and find out about their interesting jobs and what they did to get those jobs and what you can start studying if you want to do that in the future. Does that sound good? So over the next few weeks, join us as we get to talk to my friends and find out about their really interesting jobs. I hope you enjoy. When I was younger, I wanted to be a professional actor. I love acting, specifically musical theater acting. You get to sing, dance, and act. I love singing, I love acting. Dancing, I have a little bit, little bit of trouble with, but I love it so much that I moved to New York and I studied not just the dance, not just the singing, not just the acting, but everything I could get my hands on to be a professional actor. And while I was there, I met some very interesting people, like tonight's guest. Tonight, we will be joined by Christina Isaacson, who is a professional swing dance instructor. She's got a lot of interesting stories, and I really hope you enjoy tonight's interview. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. So uh, this is Stina Isaacson. Is that how you pronounce your last name? That is how you pronounce it. All right. Got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known Stina for many years. I haven't seen her in uh, probably about 10 years now. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. And you had a different last name then. That's why I was like, is that how you pronounce it? So uh, first question, real super easy one. Uh, why don't you explain in your own words uh, what your job is? I am a swing dance instructor um, and also a party fluffer. Basically, okay. so I, I go, um, I teach adults and children sometimes how to dance, swing dance, Lindy Hop, Charleston, uh, any old jazz vernacular, and then sometimes I get hired to go to people's parties or weddings and do the Charleston there to make it feel like the Great Gatsby <laughs> or you know like a bee's knees party. Sure. So, how long have you been uh, a swing dance teacher and a party fluffer? So I've been a swing dance teacher for about four years now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing the party stuff for about five or six years. So it's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but you obviously enjoy it. And uh, you're all glammed out and you look fantastic. So thank you. Yes, I, um, I do love it. It brings me a lot of uh, passion and a lot of, uh, excitement to my life mm -hmm. and it lets me use a lot of my creative juices sure in ways that I wouldn't necessarily be able to in other art forms right right well how did you get into being a swing dance teacher this is a really but at least it's funny to me oh sure um <laughs> but you know me and you both started at, and you still are uh in musical theater mm -hmm. and me being an ethnic minority we were still slightly before the Hamilton craze. Mm -hmm. So people were still not that, uh, they didn't know what to do with me because I was too ethnically ambiguous. And so I found myself just not getting hired for stuff that I knew that oh. I was fully able to do. And it was very frustrating. And then one day I was out social dancing because I've been social dancing for about 15 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a performance troupe and they performed and, and I thought, wait, you can perform doing this because there's no, there's no script as to white, black, old, young, sure. none of that. You just have to be good enough. And I'm really good at practicing stuff. So. <laughs> That's always a good skill to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, you practice until, um, a great quote that I like is, uh, practice, 
not until you get it right, but until you can't get it wrong. Well, I like the, uh, the phrase, uh, practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. Ooh, yeah, I like that. No, they're both like the same wavelength of like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you get it once, you gotta keep going. Oh yeah. Yeah, so um, I saw this group perform. I thought they were awesome. I um, asked them like, hey, like, can I join your group? And they were like, we don't need a girl. We need <laughs> either a guy or we need a couple. And so me being like without a, a guy to dance with, I found somebody. <laughs> Just running down the street. Who wants to dance? Who wants to dance? So. Well, you know, like the whole musical theater thing where they're like, sure. if they ask you if you can play trumpet, you tell them yes, and you go get a trumpet. Then you find like, out how, yeah. Yeah, no, I literally was like, I'm going to find me a guy, and I'm going to get him to dance with me. So I, I totally did that, and then we did the performance, and the troupe was like, well, she's really good at learning steps. Him, not so much. <laughs> So, so they was that me. part of your plan just trying to find someone with two left feet so you would shine no i'm not that kind of performer like i think there's <laughs> room for all of us to shine um i honestly just needed somebody that was male and i was i wanted them to be good because if sure. they look good then i look good right but apparently like my work ethic uh shone through the most so they were like we should keep her so after i joined that group then uh, the leader of that group was an instructor at a, a studio and he brought me on as his apprentice. Okay. And then we switched studios and the uh, owner of that studio was like, I like you, we should have you on. So like, that's kind of how I became an instructor. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now you mentioned something, I wanna jump back for a second. Sure. You mentioned social dancing. Do you mind uh, uh, defining that? Oh yeah, um, that is, Social dancing is where you go to a dance, there's a DJ or a band playing, and there's no set choreography. Someone will okay. say, do you want to dance? And you can say yes, or you can say no. And then uh, if you say yes, you go on the floor and they start dancing with you. And there are certain things that they do with their body that uh, tell me what I should be doing. So it's like a dance party, but it's more of these classical, these 1940s era dances. Yeah, 1930s, 1940s. Um, they sometimes have soul parties, which okay. gets into like 50s and 60s. But yeah, there is no set choreo. Um, if they keep their hand up and I'm like pressed into it, that means I turn. Uh, they can like nudge you to go a certain way. Um, it's a lot of elasticity. So it's a lot of give and take. And um, in the beginning, you look at this dance and you're like, wow, it's the leader telling the follower what to do and the follower doing that. Sure. But as, yeah, so it, it feels like a dictatorship, but mm -hmm. over time, you <laughs> well, become Well, it's a conversation. More, it's a give and take. Exactly. So over time, the followers become more confident with expressing themselves and it becomes mm -hmm. more of a leader gives me a suggestion and I'll do something with it. <laughs> so Okay. Uh, so you do a lot of dances from the 1920s, uh, 30s and 40s, uh, as we just said, with the social and then now instructing. So um, what attracted you to that style of dance? With so many different styles out there, what really attracted you to this throwback style? There's, there's two things. Okay. The music. Uh -huh. The music is amazing. Um, I just, <laughs> I absolutely love brassy big band stuff. Mm -hmm. I like that more than Charleston, honestly. Okay. But, um, you know, if people are, if they have money and, uh, they want Charleston, I'm going to Charleston, you know, <laughs> but, um, I definitely prefer doing like the 1940s stuff with the, the big flips and the big tricks and stuff like that. Cause it, it's fun, but I don't need to do tricks for it to be, uh, fun for me, but that's usually what people think of. They see the big, like tossing someone over their shoulder um, the other thing that I really love that really brought me here is the fashion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How long so, did it take to get your hair, uh, up in those curls? So I'm not going to lie. It took me about 20 minutes, which is like nothing. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've probably been doing it for so long. You like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like, um, I, I won't lie to you. This is fake hair in the back. Sure. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a look, but you know, um, this is all mine. And, um, you know, if I was really, really, I have a kid, so I don't have a lot of time to prep stuff. And I decided last minute to do this, uh, mm -hmm. at about like four o'clock in the afternoon. 
So I did not tease my hair or prep it. And so I just had to like force it sure. uh, into this style. Now I'm going to ask a geeky music question for me, right. not really for the kids. The kids will go, I don't know these names. So you mentioned you were like the music. Are you more of a fan of the Glenn Miller kind of clarinet forward or the Tommy Dorsey, Dorsey brothers trumpet forward of the big band? I am definitely a Tommy Dorsey fan. Um, I love trombone. Trombone is my favorite instrument mm -hmm. in the, the big band. So uh, anytime that I'm doing like a, a girl group, because I'm part of a, a trio mm -hmm. of dancers, anytime that there's a solo section and, and we have to pick which instrument we want, I'm always like, I want the trombone. <laughs> I want trombone. <laughs> Cause I don't want to get stuck with some other instrument or, and it just really speaks to me. So well, I can see how trombone would uh, lend itself to that style of dance because trombone is a lot of sliding and a lot of uh, it, the beauty of the trombone is in the inaccuracy of the accuracy because they're yes. having to like go into it and find it in the rhythm in the piece. So I, I like to say that the trombone slides into the pocket Okay. I don't know. I like that. <laughs> Just like, they, it like slides and scrapes into a barrel and it's like nasty. There's just something really like nasty and amazing about like a trombone. And um, I also think that because it's a lower instrument, mm -hmm. it sits lower in my body. Oh, so okay. um, I definitely tend to use my hips more and my, uh, my booty more when I'm uh, <laughs> dancing to trombone. <laughs> Best kind of dancing. <laughs> now, other than the uh, the 1930s and 40s style dancing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Life happens. Uh, other than the the kind of the throwback, the big band era dancing, uh, do you, what other styles of dance did you study? Uh, so I'm first and foremost a tap dancer. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got my start. Uh, with rhythms and so I'm always interested in more intricate rhythms than just you know the, the standard rhythm that happens in uh, swing is bum 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 ba bum bum mm -hmm. bum bum ba bum um, so like it's just fun that you can add like a million other sounds within oh, that yeah. with tap I tap, never really studied you ballet. You are the musical instrument with tap it is a really exactly. fun, fun dance and there's so many different styles within it so and it's a happy instrument. I, I can't think of a single sad tap number I've ever seen. <laughs> I can't think of a, you know, uh, right? Steve Martin once said the banjo is the happy instrument. You can't do a sad banjo number and tap is the happy dance. You can't do a sad tap number. <laughs> so. Yeah, if I think about it, I think the only uh, like melancholy banjo mm -hmm. song I can think of is a uh, Rainbow Connection. But, but even that, sad. it builds and gets yeah. happier. So, yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. So, uh, is there one style of dance that you were trained in, or you've done, or uh, do with your social dancing group uh, that you don't feel you get to do it enough, and you wish you could do it more? Definitely tap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I wish I could do it more. And uh, funny thing is, being in quarantine. Um, I basically told my husband, like, I'm going to go crazy if I can't go to tap class. And, <laughs> and um, because they're all, po everyone's posting classes online right now, I'm sure. able to take more classes than I was before because I have a kid, so I can never, like, have full freedom on time of day that I can go. So now I can watch these classes on my own time and um, to where it's more convenient for me. Sure. And yeah. I can rewind if I need to. And, um, I've been doing a lot more tap, so it's been really exciting. And because I only have social media as a way to like talk to people, I've been posting it. And a lot of people are, are saying, I didn't know you were such a hoofer. I didn't know that you were <laughs> such a great tapper. And it's like, yeah, I've been here this whole time. So. Yeah, I have watched some of your tap videos and they are wonderful. And like I mentioned Thank earlier, you. the ones where your daughter jumps in and tries to <laughs> tap along are so adorable. They're wonderful. You know, the other day, it's so funny. She's so sassy, which is like terrible. But um, I put on my tap shoes and she said, mommy, where are my tap shoes? <laughs> and I was like, you don't have any, but okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Pandemic <laughs> ends, you run out, get some small tap shoes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get her some. <laughs> well, uh, okay. So, well, that is a good segue to the next question. So if someone, uh, probably a little bit older than your daughter, um, wanted to get into dance, uh, do this style of dance, uh, 30s, 40s swing era, what would you, uh, what, uh, excuse me, I can't talk. What would be your biggest suggestion? Where, what should they study as a good basis and uh, beginning? Um, usually a lot of adults learn because they are old enough to go to bars. Sure. Uh, and a lot of bars have free classes. But because we're talking about younger people, mm -hmm. sometimes those places are restaurants. So you're able to okay. take your kid there. So you could go. Um, but group classes in general, even though they say they're adult classes, um, my group class, I would have no problem with a kid showing up to my class um, because I'm all about just whoever wants to learn should sure. be able to learn. Um, the other thing that there are occasionally teachers that teach kids classes, but they are, there are not nearly as many. And I know a lot of uh, high schools have programs where a teacher will come once a week and do an outreach. They'll come in and teach a routine, which is sure. very cool. Uh, and also just to watch lots of clips. There's a yeah. lot of uh, online clips that are really neat and uh, will really inspire people just to see uh, how amazing the history is of this dance. Well, who are your favorites to watch clips of? Like, uh, who are your influences when it comes to this style dance? So uh, for sure, no one, anybody that's in uh, swing dancing, if they don't mention Frankie Manning, like that would be kind of a crime because <laughs> he is kind of what brought back swing. Swing okay. was big in the 30s and 40s and then kind of died out in the 50s, was non-existent in the 60s, non-existent in the 70s, 80s, the very end of the 80s. And then we get into... Um, Jump, Jive, and Whale. Like, do you remember mm -hmm. that Gap commercial? Oh, I remember that. Uh, the Cherry Pop and Daddies, uh, Brian yeah. Setzer. But the Brian Setzer also before him, uh, in the 80s, he had the, the cool, scat, uh, cool Cat Swing. Yeah, so, so it was yeah. starting to come back, but they had this big just resurgence of it um, once that commercial came out. It was just crazy. <laughs> and so people just came out in droves. They wanted to learn. And um, Frankie Manning had retired. He used to be on a dance team called um, the Whitey's Lindy Hoppers okay. up in Harlem. Um, and he had retired from that and he was working at the post office as a, as a postal worker. And somebody came up to him and said, are you Frankie Manning, you know, from the, the Whitey's from this group, Lindy yeah. Hoppers? And basically brought him out of retirement. And he was, I think, in his 80s and just started traveling the world and teaching people how to do Lindy Hop as like an old man, yeah. um, which is amazing because all these people came out of the woodwork and they were like, yeah, I want to learn how to dance. And uh, at this point, the uh, renaissance or the rebirth of uh, Lindy Hop is longer now than the original birth of Lindy Hop. <laughs> well, that's interesting, but, like how history kind of does things yeah. like that. So Frankie Manning, um, another one. I would have to say I love Jewel McGowan because mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people try to focus on like how, especially when I was learning how to dance, they would say leaders, you do this and followers just follow, which is like, <laughs> that doesn't tell me how to do yeah. something. It's not very constructive. And uh, I just like being able to focus on followers. So uh, Jewel McGowan, uh, she was the dance, uh, dance partner of uh, Dean Collins and they did kind of a Hollywood style. And she's mm -hmm. famous for these incredible swivels. Okay. So like, it, sometimes you'd watch an old movie clip and it would have someone dancing in the background for just a couple seconds and you would see somebody swiveling their butt back and forth and that's Jewel McGowan. Okay, okay. <laughs> So. Well, um, we mentioned uh, music a little while earlier, but Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller. What are your favorite songs to dance to of these oh. big bands? Oh, I man. know the list is probably like astronomical. It's so long. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love Woodchopper's Ball. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, My Blue Heaven. I like standards. If they, sure. um, And then I'm a really big fan of musical theater songs that have been turned into swing. 
there's a really nice version of Ella Fitzgerald singing the story with the fringe on top. Ooh. It is I'll like have to look beautiful. That one up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very, very nice. And Slow Boat to China, I'm a big fan of that song. <laughs> Any version of it. <laughs> now, how long have you been... Now, you mentioned you've been doing this social dancing and the uh, for about 15 years and the teaching for about four years now. But yeah. in all, how long have you been dancing? Like, what age did you get started dancing? So I started uh, tap dancing when I was five, but mm -hmm. that only lasted for, like, two or three months. And then uh, because my parents didn't believe that we should be in more than one extracurricular at a time, or maybe it was two, I'm not really sure. Um, I basically was like, I want to do soccer. I want to do gymnastics. And so they were like, well, <laughs> dancing is done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I didn't come back to dance until high school, but I was just doing, you know, high school dance. Sure. So it was not really anything super serious for me. I wasn't at like the dance studio on the other side of town. I did not get back into uh, really focusing on dance until college. When I got to college, they had set dance times sure. and set dance classes that you had to go to. <laughs> and uh, you had a set uniform, so you had to wear that. And if you were late, you got locked out. I remember those days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so what is the toughest thing about your job? Oh, the toughest thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the toughest thing, there's an excess of people okay. that uh, can do the job, which is the issue in musical theater, too. Sure. Is that like, you know, 400 white blonde girls show up for one role. Right. You know, and maybe it's not as big as 400 people showing up for one job in my uh, frame of work, but you know, for every leader, there's like five followers that can do the job. Sure. So a lot of the times because you're doing a gig where there's air, which means that you're doing lifts and flips mm -hmm. and tricks and stuff. Um, they'll ask the leader, like, who do you feel comfortable throwing? Who do you feel comfortable working with? If they periodically or repeatedly work with the same person, they're probably sure, going to pick a comfort level the same there, person. Yeah. Exactly. So for a long time, I had a, um, I started out with a partner and we just weren't compatible. And so sure. I ended that partnership and then got a new partnership. And that guy kind of was, he treated me kind of like garbage. And so I was like, right. I uh, no, it's fine. You know, like uh, it's all part of the journey is like knowing what's important to you and um, how important you are to the world. And sure. I knew that what I was doing was important and I knew that he did not respect my time. Sure. And I, <laughs> it was kind of rude, but I told him as I left, I was like, uh, I'd rather work with nobody than work with you. <laughs> Um, well, but, with, you know. it, with any job, you there are people that just rub people the wrong way, and it's how we get over that and how we deal with that that make us who we are. So for sure. And so um, I was on that team, as I said before, and I, I had like two or three uh, male uh, leaders that I was dancing with that I felt uh, pretty good about, and they felt pretty mm -hmm. good with me. And then um, there were two other girls on the team that I really connected well with. And we were always complaining about how oh, the guys, like they're never as good as we are like with footwork and they're just not as consistent. And so we formed our own troop, just the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so now I, I dance primarily with females only and uh, mm -hmm. not partner dancing, but I, I do still teach partner dancing. Sure. I still dance it. It's just I primarily perform doing stuff on my own, solo stuff. Okay, wonderful. All right, uh, so we're, I'm pretty much out of questions that I had. I do have one more thing I want to ask because we did mention social media earlier. If people wanted to, to see you dancing, uh, where can they find you? Okay, um, I have a couple of ways. You can go to Facebook and you can look up Stina Dallins Isaacson, which that's my, my old name that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Dallins is D-A-L-L-O-N-S, mm -hmm. and Isaacson is the Norwegian spelling, so it's I-S-A-K-S-O-N. 
S E N. All right. Um, you can also go to, uh, I was going to say Venmo. Yeah, you can pay me if you want to, but, uh, <laughs> you can go to uh, Instagram and I'm Stina S T I N A. And then the numbers nine, three, four, four, six. And do you is, have anything? Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have anything on YouTube or anything like that, that they can find you on? Uh, I do wise? have, uh, honestly, if they wanted to find clips of me dancing, it's best to look up. Uh, I don't remember the channel name, but I do know that um, my girl troop has stuff up on YouTube. Okay. Uh, we're called the bathtub Ginnies. So it's like bathtub gin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so B A T H T U B space G I N N Y S. So it's kind of like uh, the girlfriend of Harry Potter. Sure. And yeah. And then you can also look up my name, Stina Dallins, and uh, stuff should show up. Okay. I'll make sure to put it in the link. So if people want to check out, they can. Thank you of so course. much for, uh, for agreeing to do this. No uh, problem. I hope it was painless. So. Oh yeah, yeah. This was but. easy. And I, I got out of bedtime, honestly. So I'm like super excited. <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our interview with Stina. She is such a wonderful person. I had so much fun getting to talk with her again. It's been way too long. Now, please be sure to go check out her Facebook, her Instagram, her YouTube. See all of her amazing performances. They are wonderful. And she does teach a little bit on her Facebook, which is a lot of fun to watch. Okay, guys, so next week we have a very special one. So you'll want to come back because we have a friend of mine who is a Las Vegas magician coming in. He's going to talk about how he got into magic and maybe show us a trick or two. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.